Hi, everybody. Hey. Welcome to the White Hatter YouTube News Show. I'm, I'm Brandon. Dar oh, I'm Darren. <laughs> He's Darren. I'm Darren. That's uh, Brandon. <laughs> let's, um, today's show, we have everything. There's a theme, right? Everything today is relating around privacy. Darren's very private right now. Privacy. All right. Privacy. Uh, yeah, privacy is going to be kind of like the main topic for. I'm excited about today. this because we're kind of privacy hawks here at the company, right? Like, yeah. We definitely believe in privacy and our information. There needs to be a balance for mm -hmm. sure, but we're definitely more on the privacy hawk side of things for a good reason, yes. right? And some of those reasons we're going to talk about in today's presentation. Yeah. Or it's not a presentation, it's program. actually a program. I'm so used to saying presentations. New show. Oh, there you go. Discussion. There you go. Whatever, okay, whatever, boomer. whatever this is. Okay, boomer. Uh, the first topic for today is um, Duck Duck Go, quack, quack. Uh, which we talked about quack, many quack. times. That's my duck. Quack, quack. <laughs> yes, as we talked about many times here on the show. Uh, for those of you who are new to the show, it is a it is a Google alternative where basically mm -hmm. they don't uh, track your search history. It's about filter bubbles, right? Y yeah, that as well. But you know, Google, you type in something in Google, it uses your location, your computer mm -hmm. information to build a profile about you. Mm -hmm. uh, DuckDuckGo doesn't have that model. Yeah. So what seems really interesting is that they've seen about a 62% increase in traffic <laughs> uh, in 2020. What's really interesting is I think Google tried to buy them out a number of years ago and they said no. And uh, <laughs> primarily because they're the competitor, right? They're Google's competitor. Are they? I mean, there's Bing. Yeah, there's Bing, there's Yahoo, there's Yandex, there's a variety of them yes. out there, right? But I mean, what's really cool about DuckDuckGo is that it doesn't track you, right? Mm -hmm. It's not collecting that metadata like all these other people do to form that filter bubble about who you are, what you do, what you like, what you don't like, all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, and I find, because I do use it, depending upon what I'm doing, I do mm -hmm. use DuckDuckGo for sure. It may not give you as many... Um, uh, responses, Relevant, relevancy, yeah, relevancy yeah. right? Where, but depending upon what you're doing and what you're looking for, it's a good thing to do. Like a good example, if you're looking up something from a medical standpoint, because it has to do with you, rather than letting Google and all the other big search engines know that you're searching. What's some, this bump on my arm? Yeah, I mean, doing it on DuckDuckGo might be a better way to go, yeah. right? So, I mean, it, it it's kind of cool that way. And for those of you that never tried it, tried it. Like we recommend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so that's good for them seeing an and increase. And it's free. It is free. It's free. Also in the news is more on WhatsApp, but <laughs> more so on last... its competitors. So Signal. Now, before we go there, we talked about WhatsApp last show, right? Where we talked about all the, the news about what apps that they were changing their privacy and policy and all that kind of stuff. And in the end, after you looked at everything, really, there wasn't a big difference, right? Yeah, and apparently when people are talking about like, yeah, it specifies Facebook as the data sharing company. But right. I mean, it was kind of already doing that anyways. Overlord. Yeah. Remember Facebook Overlord. Yes. Um, what, what's interesting is, is that then people saw a, a surge in, in, in people downloading the Signal app, which right. is basically kind of its competitor. Signal being uh, an encrypted internet platform. But and Signal, it's open source too, isn't it? Isn't yes. Signal open source? Mm, I believe they they have opened it for review for security yeah, purposes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and now it's, you know, they don't, collect as much data no, as no, WhatsApp no. and you know, they're not owned by Facebook. Yeah. So a lot of people, uh, I mean, if, if people were to ask us what's the what's the, the safest multi-platform private app out there for communications, we would say Signal. Yeah, for sure. Uh, although Signal uh, this week saw a uh, an outage <laughs> in its services, probably because it saw a surge of people going from WhatsApp to signal. I wonder why. Could something have happened on January 6th maybe had an impact on that? Just saying, right? And uh, you're right. I mean, for the adults um, and young adults, if you're looking for an encrypted private messaging service that's not collecting your information, Signal's the way to go. For younger kids and families, we recommend Kinzu, right? Kinzu, the uh, messaging app Kinzu. Yeah. For parents and that kind of stuff. But Signal, it, it doesn't surprise me that they experienced an outage. I'm actually writing a, um, as you know, companies are approaching us, asking us to recommend their products, right? Mm -hmm. And I came across one, and we'll talk about that in another show. I'm writing up something now about it. And uh, I think they were the, um, the makers of their own success with regards to the failure. In other words, their product was so popular that it crashed their servers during Christmas. So as a result of that, people who bought the product couldn't use it, mm -hmm. including myself, which was extremely frustrating mm -hmm. to do t &E on it. So I bet you that's what happened here, right? Uh, that's, what, that's what we're assuming. Assuming. Yeah. Assuming. Most likely that's what happened. Yeah, assuming. 
which makes an ass out of you and me, right? A-S-S-U-M-E. Breaks yes, did you check the oil in your car this morning? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. That's did why I have an oil light. Mm-hmm. Did and you start did up the you, car? Did you check the oil light? Uh, yes, I did. It starts on the, on when you start up the, the new cars that we have, when you start it up, it does a full systems check. Did you if check the bulb? No, well, if the bulb wasn't working, it wouldn't have come on. You just have to check the code? Well, make the, sure the code wasn't bulky? God, where are you going with this? We assume things as humans all the time. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, ring! Ring, so. Ring, 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 ring. Uh, ring uh, ha- is making some updates. They're yeah, having. Uh, probably uh, the most popular doorbell security cam on the market. Yeah, they're, they're adding a, an optional feature for users you have to opt into it, naturally. Uh, adding end-to-end encryption, which means the videos that you send between Ooh. you and the Ring servers are encrypted, uh, meaning someone can't you know, spy on it on the outside, although they haven't really discussed and disclosed their partnership with law enforcement, as right. we discussed in the past. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. are some programs out there that does allow, or yeah. obviously if you share your video to your neighborhood, then that's just... I mean, there it. were some issues with Ring when it first came out right there's still is issues you know privacy and all that kind of stuff but uh i mean this is a good step in the right way of creating the end-to-end encryption right? opt in though so yeah. you just have to opt in oh and the first gen second gen uh ring cameras are not uh applicable for the for oh that could this have been a marketing ploy then too right like why wouldn't they have applied this <laughs> you got the... first gen by the third gen yeah, it has like, end-to-end encryption very apple-like oh although i love apple you gotta be very careful right but i love apple i truly do but i mean it would make sense. It would probably be fairly easy to write some kind of software coding so that they could have put it into the first and second gens, right? You could would be, think. Oh, there could be just technical limitations because the processing power is not strong enough to do in the encryption. Oh, God, you're such a millennial. Whatever. But then again, it might be a ploy to make people... But then if it was really a ploy, they, they would have it as a default option. I'm still waiting. Was it? Is it Ring that has the drone that flies around and does your yes, own? Yes, it, it was last year they, they announced this I'm drone. buying one of those. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to buy it and I'm going to put it here in the studio. So that is representing the technical overlord will fly in behind us. I don't us. think you can feed the camera into our system. No, but it'll be, just be cool as we're talking like this, all of a sudden this drone comes out of nowhere. And it, it, like the Terminator, right? The Terminator. Right. That'd be kind of cool. Anyways, but I think that that is a good uh, good move on Ring's part. I mean, so, from a business standpoint, I think that's a good thing. Privacy issue, increased privacy through encryption. So if people are able to hack in, they're not going to be able to see yeah. anything. I kind of like it. So I think that's a good thing. If you're a Ring user, um, update to end it's, it's too bad they don't make it opt out. Yeah. Right? They make it an opt in well, function. It's processing power on their end. I know, but they, you know, that's the only other thing I would say, make it opt, make it an opt out so that it's automatically already encrypted right. and you have to opt out other than do it rather than the other way around. I just think that's a better way to go. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's just me as a boomer. No, I agree. Uh, ooh, so interesting story from a security researcher who found a flaw in YouTube systems. <laughs> and what what they were able to do is they were uh, able I to uh, basically make y- private YouTube videos public at a lower quality resolution yeah, yeah. and with no sound. And how did they do that? Like when you shared this with me, it was actually kind of funny because I immediately brought a picture to my mind, excuse the pun, but how did they do it? Yeah, so it was all, it was based off of YouTube's thumbnail system. So thumbnails, for those of you who don't know, is when you watch a video, before you click on the video, there's a little picture yeah, yeah. that kind of people can either, you know, create yeah, yeah. or are your pictures automatically generated. Right. Well, apparently it was a flaw in the system when the security researcher was able to, on a private video, have thumbnails made like every second or so. And then they wrote a script that basically stitched all the screen thumbnails together. So, so it's like the stop action movement videos you see yes. like claymation right where they they took lego or clay and make it stop still pictures and they sew them together like you said and it now becomes a, a movie yes so that's what they were able to do yes that's pretty freaking smart yeah. when you think about they it. got uh five thousand ah, dollars in uh, bug bounty rewards from google so, so what's a bounty award again most just so that big companies have a program uh open to hackers who if you can hack the systems disclose it to the company first and then stay silent on it for a couple of weeks until they fix the issue, and then you can talk about it. Uh, it's an it's it's an award system. So yeah, basically, if you find an issue, we give you money because you basically did work for us. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, they've open sourced their security to see if there's any bugs that they oversaw that can be fixed, right? Because I mean, it's like writers, right? I don't know how many times I'll write something, I'll give it to you or give it to mom to review, and you guys see something that I don't see. Yeah. Right. So kind of the same idea when it comes to software and 
that some of these companies actually pay some pretty good money. Yeah. Right? Five thousand dollars, pretty good chunk of change. Yeah. Let's pretty see. ingenious though when you think yeah. about it, right? A little stop stop action motion video. Yeah. Right, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So yeah, it's an interesting way. So you know, mm -hmm. even if a private YouTube video wasn't technically private. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I just added this because it's just, just just interesting discussion around. It's kind of timely, actually. Internet when you think of things. About it. So um, I think he's going to be the uh, next president of the United States, right? <laughs> Popular mechanics. Why Joe Biden can't bring his Peloton bike to the White House? <laughs> so I, now, didn't Michelle Obama had one of those? Yeah, that's what, that's the report talked about that. But apparently, they had a, a customized version with like with a camera, and microphone. Where, where so why is this an issue? Explain to everybody why. Okay, so Peloton in, uh, in the bikes. You probably heard the name in advertising in the last year or so because mm -hmm. of it's being home. big over two years. Yeah. Basically, it's like uh, a workout where you can have live video, you can get cameras, microphones, which obviously if you have nuclear launch codes, uh, you may not want a bike <laughs> that can hear you. <laughs> or see you. <laughs> or see you. So, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's, it's a whole discussion around IoT devices, Internet of Things, you bring more technology into the household or, you know, government building, and, you know, it, it can hear you and see you and who has access to that, what's the security, if someone that's, hacks it. That's why a lot of governments, like the U.S. government, Canada has, they're called SCIFs, right, where they're rooms that before you go into the room, you have to take off all electronic devices. You have to put it basically into a freaking... Um, uh, basket and store it out, <laughs> outside and then you can go in and talk, right? I yeah. mean, that's the reality, right? Anything that sends out a signal, if uh, a, a bad actor can put something in there so they can hear and see mm -hmm. you, right? I mean, even policing, depending upon some of the uh, meetings that I went into, we were required to drop all our cell phones outside of the meeting room before we get, went in for that very purpose. Yeah. Um, so it's just an interesting discussion around, you know, the, the, the security and privacy over these devices. And Pink Peace from a security researcher talking about CES 2021. Uh, so CES, CES is the Consumer Entertainment, uh, Consumer Electronic Showcase, which yes. basically is typically a conference every year that companies, you know, have booths and presentations. I wanted to go to that this year, to be honest, but yeah. because of COVID, we couldn't. And they show it's up, in Vegas, right? Yes. And they yeah. show and they show up, I think yes. And they show off all their products, their their prototyping, they're going to mm -hmm. release, kind of like looking to the future of Yeah, the that's year. where they showed the uh, the ring drone last yeah, year. Last year. Mm -hmm. I'm getting so, one. Did I tell you that? Yes, I know you did. Um, so uh, we see it every year and how technology, and particularly in cars, has become more and more connected. Yes. And and what this security researcher is kind of hypothesizing is to, to the extent where cars are so connected that all the data is being sent to, say, like an insurance company. Right. Which does technically already exist, yes. but there's usually a little dongle you, yeah. you, you get from your company and you, you opt in and plug it in. Yeah. I mean, every car, at least until I retired a couple of years ago, um, are accident reconstructionists when they went to accident scenes. They have a device that you can plug in and basically it'll tell you. At the time of the accident, how fast were you going? Where are you wearing your seat belts? Where are the brakes applied? How long were they applied for? Were all your brake lights working? It's just a ton of information on what was going on in your vehicle. So I can actually see how insurance companies could use that to help um, decrease payments. Oh. Yeah, they do already in, in a way like, you know, through through the, um, you know, good driving, plug the, plug the dongle into your car and you good driving, you get a discount. Yeah, I think that's in the U.S. I don't think that's here in Canada. Yet. I don't know that. I don't know if it's in Canada yeah, or I don't not. know if, you know, here in the province, right? And I don't think ICBC is doing that. No, no, yeah. So, yeah, right? in, but in places they, where private insurance is. Yeah, it, it may it may. Help. Well, there's not a monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it may happen elsewhere. I don't know if there is anybody of our viewers watching. Let us know via, you know, just uh, put in a, uh, a comment in the comments part of uh, uh, the stream that we're doing right now. But it's, it's interesting. Now, what you're saying is hypothetically because everything's gone digital. And our car is a good example. Both of them use Wi-Fi, right? Like mm -hmm. they could, uh, a company could upload that information, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, could there be a situation where an insurance company, because all the cars have the capability now, where it's an automatically opt-in feature, where mm. you know you you have to. But do upload they have the right to do that? See, that's an interesting question legally. Well, I if, mean, if it's like ICBC who has like the monopoly, they could do that. Well, but does it make it legal? Right? I, there could be some interesting does arguments. Does ICBC there. have a monopoly on the market illegal as well? But if I if I <laughs> own the vehicle, then I own all the information in there. So therefore, does the overlord, whoever they may be, do they have the right to access that information and use against me? 
does question. does the hydro company have the right to use their wireless scanner to see how much energy you're using in your house? Well, I think they do. So what's what's the difference? Oh. Eh? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you brought up the example of um, uh, shopping like grocery stores. Yeah, right? yeah. So the security researcher, you know, made the analogy where you know they pay more for groceries because they don't choose to use the rewards card. Loyalty yes. card because it tracks and you sells yeah. data and all that stuff. But a lot of people don't know that, right? A lot, a lot of people don't know that those loyalty cards that you gave to get discounts, everything you've bought is captured and stored as soon as they do that, that scanner yeah. thing. And uh, conglomerates, overlords, are taking that information and they're selling it to people to make money. Now, we also know that insurance, life insurance companies can also look at it. There's been some good cases where all of a sudden I'm looking at what you're buying, like you're buying ice cream, candy, fatty foods, cigarettes, alcohol. Would Bought your, it for a friend. Yeah. Would your insurance premiums be higher than maybe somebody who's buying health food, doesn't smoke? It's But the problem very with those cases right? and that the people brought up is you have to prove that's the person who ate it. Yeah, but. Much like when you're dealing with a hacker, how do you prove it was a person on the But you know, you know, what some of these companies are now doing though is they're saying if you want this insurance, you have to opt into it. If you don't, find someplace else. I don't care, it's up to you. And I guess that's what all about competitive marketplace. Bloody overlords. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so, interesting. interesting. Interesting discussion. Yeah, right? interesting kind but, of But you know, idea. even your car is spying on you, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's not spying, but it's collecting everything you're doing in the vehicle. It's all collected into this little box, and that little box can now be accessed via hard or via Wi-Fi. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So that, that's an interesting piece from from that. Mm. Um, and last story, kind of continuing on with the events that have been happening privacy. this month uh, in regards to privacy. Uh, we're talking about you know capital riders. Um, a lot of people are talking about the app Parlor, which was um, an alternative to Twitter. But it's a right-wing alternative to Twitter. <laughs> Don't you have to like, upload your ID to that yeah, platform? Yeah, you have to update a ton of personal information. And apparently it's supposed to be private. But when, but when, when like Amazon and all the other companies dropped it, they lost security. And therefore, hackers were able to get in. So, I mean, basically talking about, you know, if you're planning on doing things uh, and it's on the internet, it's going to be found. I mean, what's interesting about this is that it wasn't a true black hat or hack. The information was there for anybody to see. It's just that this one person went, wow, let's collect all this stuff and let's store it before it disappears. And as a result of that, everybody who was using Parler during the riot, uh, the insurrection in Washington Capitol, their GPS on their phone was showing where they were at the time. Yeah. So all of a sudden they're saying, I wasn't there. Really? Right? And not only was it showing you GPS, but it was also, they were also able to pull out pictures. My friend had my phone. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's you on the phone in the video, right? Okay. Well, then there's no excuse there. No. But again, <laughs> if there's anything, something else that these, the, the, the insurrection, the riots in Washington, D.C. showed us is that anything posted online is public, it's permanent, it's searchable, exploitable, copyable, shareable, and a lot of it's for sale and can come back to haunt you. I mean, it was, uh, it's amazing. And I predicted this. In fact, the day of the riots, I was actually on my Twitter account going, I guarantee you they're, they're taking stills of all these things and they're going to use OSINT to, to find mm -hmm. these individuals. And lo and behold, guess is what is happening. And boy, oh boy. So it should be. Like these people just, and you know what's even funnier? You know, these right wing extremists who don't like wearing masks. <laughs> It actually made it easier for law enforcement to get them. Oh, look, a mask would have helped in the situation. <laughs> Just like, oh my God, right? But again, I, I do, like, there's even been, I think there was a nurse back east who was suspended without pay from her job because she went down into the U.S. to participate in the actual riots, mm -hmm. right? And it was captured, so she had no way to say I wasn't there. And now it comes down to all freedom of speech, freedom of expression, right? Like, it's... It's very interesting to see where, where this is going to go. But another good example how what you're doing online can cost you emotionally, psychologically, physically, mm -hmm. and socially, right? So anyways, good yeah. show. Good show. That's that. A lot of privacy <laughs> privacy issues. Hey, you did, a, you did a presentation this morning for elementary kids? Yes, we did a grade four or five program this morning. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I think we got how many programs booked this year? Yeah. Well, Already? We're up to, we're up to 51 until the first week of March. If you're looking at us come to your school, please contact us soon because days are booking up. Yeah, we had another couple of phone calls this morning of st uh, uh, schools and groups inquiring about bringing us in, right? So, and that's what's cool. I mean, we are on track 
to surpass the number of schools we've ever presented to in a year compared to when we were doing it face to face. Well, we can reach more schools in a week and in a day. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I'm just thinking of like we can, we typically do. I guess our days are like booked in like three segments, right? That's you right. have a morning a morning block, afternoon block, and like an evening block right. for like parents. Right. It's kind of like you know, looking at timing. It's kind of how things have, have turned out. And when we were traveling, usually we have travel days. So like you, maybe you're traveling on Monday, then you, pre you know, present on a Tuesday, then you travel on that night. Yeah, I guess there are two more extra days to present. Yeah, we do, right? And so or as, one as, and a half. as as a result of that, we're we're able to fit in way more schools, and and because we're doing things virtually, we can reach vast distances without costs associated mm -hmm. with it, right? So I'm liking virtual, are, I'm kind of liking virtual more than in person. I do, and, and again, I said this before, but- It's how you do it. Some of the feedback we're getting from educators right now is that they too are also liking it to a degree. Why? Because it's smaller classes, you know? We used to do this in front of groups, I think the largest group we ever did was 2,100 students in Washington State at a huge high school I was at <laughs> down there, right? Yeah. Well, it's really hard maybe for grade 10s to say anything because they're afraid of what the grade 12s are gonna think about them, right? right. Well, but because we're doing classrooms now of same age groups in most cases, there's smaller cohorts, which means that there's more interaction and more discussion taking place, which is kind of cool. Yeah, and we're also gonna be implementing a feature where students can actually send us a question anonymously through their phone. It's gonna be pretty which cool. Which is gonna be really cool. It's gonna be pretty cool. I mean, we're, we're using, uh, we're using a, a platform Two platforms, actually. Technically two platforms, we kind of just mash Mountain, together. Which is kind of cool, the way that you've done it, right? So, but, um, and we're also getting way more parents attending, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, we would do parents' presentations. We'd be lucky, you know, we were at a school of 1,300 students. We have three or four, four parents show up. Um, on average, most of our parents' presentations, 10 to 20 parents. I mean, we're getting huge parent turnout now. Mm -hmm. Why? Because... They no longer have to travel. They can stay at home in their pajamas with a glass of wine, sit back and watch us talk, right? Which is kind of cool. True. Right? So, and they can watch it multiple times over a 24 hour time span, right? Mm -hmm. So, cause we, we give that ability. So there's all kinds of pluses. I, I'm not gonna lie to you though. I kind of miss the face to face. Cause you, yeah. you kind of feed off the energy of the audience, right? And there's nothing better than face to face, but. But I, I like the cooler things we can do virtually. I know. Like green screens and like pop-ins and like. Can you demonstrate any of that right now? Or we can't cause we're on YouTube uh, right now, Green screen right? camera is not, record it's not on right now. But I mean, we've got like one, two, three, four different cameras in here, multiple angles. I mean, it's so cool. Anyways, yeah, yeah we're busy. We're busy, and we're, but we're loving every minute of it. Yeah. Right? We're loving every minute. And because of what you've done here, you're now presenting to a teacher's, one or two teacher's conferences on the whole idea of video learning, right? Like how to do it, yeah. how to set things up. That's interesting, yeah. How do I do that in an hour? That's, I'll figure, that's I'll figure you, it out. Dude. That's I'll figure you, it out. Dude. Let's build a. <laughs> yeah. Nice. But I mean, the, the issue for them is taking what you've done here and shrinking it down to a manageable yeah. chunk for them to do in their homes, yep. right? And stuff. So, uh, but, and, and again, it's important because just last week in the province of Ontario, we had another issue where a grade four class was bombed by somebody who was able to get in and was able to show adult male erotica taking place, pornography, in front and the grade four kids seeing this, like, mm. oh my God, right? So, and we can't blame the teachers for this. I mean, like it or not, they were forced into this, mm -hmm. this realm of doing things virtually, so they were learning as much as everybody else. But, I mean, you've been doing this now for about a year and a half, almost two years, and we've learned a lot, and now it's all about sharing what we've learned yep. to the educators, right? Yeah. So, kind of cool, kind of cool. So, yeah, good day, good good session on privacy. Yeah. So, Alrighty. on behalf of myself, I'm Darren. And Bren, thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you again next week on updating you whatever else is happening in the online world, privacy and security. See you next week, everybody. Bye. Bye.